we look, our world is facing a huge range of unprecedented challenges. So if you're a leader right now, how do you navigate your way through this? How do you make decisions in the teeth of so much uncertainty? How are you going to reconnect your people and rebuild your team so that they're fit to face the future? And what does it even mean to be a leader in such an increasingly challenging world? These and other questions I've been putting to top business leaders from across Europe, and I've had some surprisingly candid responses. So why don't you join me, Nisha Pele, for the latest episode brought to you by Sherpany of The Agenda. My guest today is steeped in data analytics and digitalization, and she also mentors other business leaders on the challenges of leadership. Her name is Susanna Hoff, and for over seven years, she ran Switzerland's third biggest company, Swiss Post, as CEO. She now runs her own advisory company, working closely as a sparring partner with other C-suite executives. Well, let's meet her, shall we? What makes her tick? Hello, Zuzana, welcome to the agenda. Hello, Nisha. So I want to start by asking you what it was like when you first joined Swiss Post. You were an outsider. You had a long career at IBM and then you led BT in Switzerland. You came in with a digitization mission, also the first female CEO. How did you gain the trust of the people in this very different organization, Swiss Post? Yeah, uh, I think when I remember back, trust is something first, it starts with yourself. Do you give people trust? And then does people trust in what you will achieve? And I was called for the CEO job because of my digital and my technical uh, background and the whole experience I had there. So looking for trust, first you have not this trust when the people, the new CEO, what does he, she will do? How, do, they, do they eliminate jobs? And all these fears come up. And therefore I started really to make the first months only tour in the employee area. I was walking around, going around all over Switzerland and as well abroad to learn from the people where they are, what kind of fear they have and things like this. You need to know your base. What did you find most difficult about putting your stamp on Swiss Post? <laughs> I think you need to first make a clear lighthouse way how you go forward with this because everybody has different things. Even if you say digitalization, everybody thinks something different. This is a buzzword. This is not clear what happens. And therefore, we, we really defined first a vision. What should be a post in future? How and then how it looks, the strategy that means the way to this vision, to this lighthouse, and then how we take everybody with us and always according customer needs. And the most difficult thing is to really bring running up this, this uh, vision, going in the direction, bring everybody, it's 60,000 people in, at this time in Swiss Post, how can you bring this behind all these ideas and this development and how you can engage them. That was for me the most, uh, if most important, but also the most difficult process. So there must have been quite a lot of suspicion about you and your mission. You were an outsider, you're trying to change the organization. How easy is it as a leader to live with that? The fact that there are many people who probably don't like you and are very suspicious of you. Yeah, you can imagine it's, uh, it's not only employees, there is a lot of stakeholders around you. Not everybody see what you do in a, in a good way. They, it's a lot of criticism. It's a lot of, of different opinions. I think you, you need to dance <laughs> and to bring all these people together, what you never will achieve. That's I know already. But the most difficult thing is to have a message why you do this. It needs this pain to change. And if you don't do this, the competition will come in and, and there will be a lot of other pains we have to do. And, and I think this, this, this change, this painful 
um, drill to it, to really get it and then push the people forward. That's that's really the, the most important and most difficult thing. I had to fight with myself as well and always say, do I really make it in the right uh, tempo? Is it too fast? Is it not too fast? Do we have to accelerate? And yes, people have to be convinced that they need to go with you because otherwise you can't do it. But you have to convince them on the way. You can't do it from the beginning because they don't think it's right. They have probably different ideas. So you have been a trailblazer as a woman in a very techie world. Uh, that couldn't have been easy. Were you, were you having to work harder to make your mark? Yeah, you... As a woman, you are always in in a very high observation because especially when you start and I was always the first woman in a team and I think it's very important then that I always looked about more females, about more women they can join in my team because it makes a difference in the atmosphere. I, I can't describe this really what is exactly, but there is a different thinking and it adds more to inclusion. And if you look about customers, um, they are always uh, different, uh, different uh, peoples in and as well women. And I felt that when we go in customer area and there were some women and we were only men and I'm the only one, I don't feel so good. So I think it's, it's really good if we have mixed team. So that makes a difference. And do women have a different style of leadership? Do they make better leaders? I think you can't say better or worse, I don't know, but it makes the, it's a different style. I'm personally, when I was leading the post, I had so a different style. I was a, not, not the same leader than my uh, pre-successor. And I think it's, it's really, you need to live your style and, and women are, often very inclusive and they they want sometimes you probably wait a little bit longer or you ask question. One example, I was asking a lot of questions and the man always said to me, why do you take so many questions? Do you don't know the answer? And I said, no, misunderstanding. I want to know your thoughts and I want to know what you think. That's why I'm asking. So that's you need to explain what you do as a woman because you are not not exactly the same as a man. That's clear. Hmm. I know you had a difficult experience and, and had to step down as CEO of Swiss Post and, and there's an ongoing case with the Postbud subsidiary. So you can't talk to us about it in any detail. Of course, I totally get that. But one of the things I've been exploring in my conversations with leaders is how do they respond to the setbacks that they encounter? Is it possible to turn them into learning experiences, for instance? So what was your experience? How did you deal with that setback? I think when you got in a crisis or in a very difficult situation as a leader, you have, you have two sides to deal. You have you personally, how you take this you can't change it, probably you don't find it fair or right, whatever you think, but you have to deal with yourself and you have to accept that's the situation, how we go out. And then the other is the company, how you deal with the company, how you steer the company in a difficult situation, in a crisis, in, in things like this. And my personal learning is first, take your mirror and ask yourself what what do you want to go? You can just go out and say, okay, I leave everything and walk away. Or you can say, as is more my, my uh, opinion and my, my spirit, what I have to do that we can go in the right direction. And then you have to lead the company, but you have also to see when company and your person is, is dividing. Because often, and you see this in all cases of leaders, at the end, especially from the medias, is focus on the leader. And, and this you have to deal with yourself. So divide in the right moment, but steer the company, but also be very honest and clear with yourself and look in the mirror what you're doing. Do you want to walk away? 
you go on? Do you want to solve? What kind of type you are? It couldn't have been at all easy, Susanna, when it came to that point when there was a parting of the ways and your path moved on from Swiss Post. How did you cope with that? How do you cope with it as an individual? You have to integrate all the different stakeholders and just do it very professionally, be communicative as good as you can or what you can and what not, and involve also the right people to analyze. And in the personal side, you have to cover also your direct family members or friends because this is important because they are all also involved because the name in my case was clear and uh, and children you have to, to to protect from this because this is also a thing I learned not very fair but it is like it is the, yeah you have to protect now you run your own advisory firm Susanna um, and you are giving advice very closely on a daily basis with um, other very senior leaders and with governing boards, I understand. What advice do you give based on your own experience regarding managing difficult situations? Look, um, I mean, in many transformation projects and with leaders, and I think every leader knows it's not one way there are always different situations and different options and i'm working with this person to to elaborate and to to make judgment on these options because as a leader you need sometimes a very neutral person they can help and and advise you what is the pro cons how this will be the consequences out of this and i think our our world is such complex and leaders are sometimes very much alone. I support leaders and I like this because I can help them to make this acting role with a different angle, different inputs. Leaders are very much alone, you said. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, that's a good point. Alone means not alone. You have always your team, you have your board, you have your consultants, whatever you put around you. but there are sometimes moments you are really alone with you and you need to make very difficult decisions and that's what i'm what i'm stepping so you can provide that sounding board to leaders when they have exactly. to make those decisions is that how you see your role because on your resume i noticed that you call yourself a sparring partner to senior leaders um and I thought, oh, I wonder what that means. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, we talked before from difficult situation. It's not always difficult situation. It's also having a sparring partner to on the same level and you can exchange certain ideas about future because future is always uh, a journey to go. There are many, many roles in this, uh, in this sparring partner, coaching, mentoring, whatever you want to call it. It's different or it's also onboarding from new leaders. Because if you become a, a CEO, you, you need to learn certain things. And if somebody can help you and do it, um, give you some advice, that would also be a, a good start for them. What are the kinds of things that young leaders, new leaders grapple with when they first make that transition to being the top person, the main decision maker? Yeah, young leaders, they don't have this experience with certain types of of people, probably. I don't want to be generalized, but that's what I see. Young leaders, they have a lot of ideas, a lot of power, but they have to look how, how this team works together. Is it an inclusive team? Is the team diverse? Do they really catch all these different uh, opinions, all these different, uh, what I say, this different type of people because you can't have only green or blue you need to have all the colors that's important so you need this team that's really bring all the aspects in because if you miss one it could be later a mistake and i think that makes really sense to have this diverse team but diversity is not only gender it's in all all uh, facet of uh, diversity and inclusion 
And the work you're doing with leaders now, what do you think are the key issues that they are grappling with, the key uncertainties, decisions that they have to, to make right now? I think the complexity is very much growing. There are so many points to, to include, and especially if you drive a business who is not only one product and one service. So you have to be very careful that you are not disrupted. You have so much complexity around that you can't do this alone. So my, my way was always take the best people around you that they can make you aware and that they can prevent you making biggest uh, mistake. What are the top three tips you give them about how to run their businesses? Three tips. First, look at your team. What is your team around you? Is it inclusive enough that you as a leader can be sure you don't miss an aspect? Very important. Probably a second one is, do you have built up a good governance, a good controlling? This is some operational, but it's important, and especially today in cyber. Do you are, are you really on the top of this? That's for protecting the company. And then, of course, the business topics, how you look in future. What are disruption who can come? What what could be what could be important for your company that you can grow or on the other side you are in danger? What are these points and how you work on this? There are many others, but I think these three are always a topic with every leader I talk to. And at the moment, with so much uncertainty around how we're going to emerge from the COVID pandemic and what the new world of work will look like. What are the kinds of discussions that you're hearing different leaders are making and, and going through? You can divide it in, in, in financials, how we can survive. Do we have enough cash? Do we can really come out of this crisis? Not every company has this. Then to deal with way of working, it depends on your business, but you have hybrid model. And then as well, how does the customer change, the customer behavior? For example, I'm working very much in, uh, in logistics and delivery, and, and there is a lot of customer change since pandemic, and so quick, so fast, so you have to adapt. Our podcast series is all about leaders talking about leadership. Is there a final thought that you want to leave our listeners with? Yeah, my, my credo or my fil rouge or how you want to say it is always a leader is as good as his team and he has his company behind him or her. And I think never forget the base of the people. They need to come with you. They are on the front of the business. So it's a people business. Even you are in a very high tech um, environment, take the team with you engage the team, motivate the team, but also take out a lot of positive things from the team. Susanna Rohoff, it's been so interesting talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us on the agenda. Thank you very much, Nisha. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you.